today we're going to study series and using various methods we have learned already that's a difficult part because we don't know which ways uh which method which method works for the problem so i'm going to write down one problem and ask you to find all the possible ways to prove it's converting or diverging. Okay. So my first problem is, is this. Okay. He has n minus one and cube plus one. First of all, you make a, a guess. Okay, whether it's converting or diverging. Then you try to find all the possible ways to to prove your claim. Okay. I will ask you, okay, what is the idea to prove it's converging or diverging? I give you enough time. We're gonna have a two lessons on this. Okay, use a you know call a strategy to to test the series for convergence and divergence. Okay, we have to learn the mm -hmm. ends to test for divergence and the definition for the for the for the convergent divergent. Now sometimes we use that to prove it's convergent. Okay. And integral test, the compression test, limit the compression test, and then uh, road test, ratio test. And also there was a one called absolute value test, maybe I put it up. Because if you prove it's absolute value of each term, if it's convergent, then the origin series is convergent. Okay. So for this particular problem, how many ways do you can uh, show it's convergent or divergent? Okay. Okay. Think about it. <clears throat> yeah, don't think, and think about it because it's supposed this is not like that. Are you able to do it? It's a question. <laughs> right. You have to, you have to. Pay attention to this course because don't 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 think I'm going to okay. I'm going to spend one or two or two or two days just prepare review for this test. Now it'd be too late, and you have to know how to do the problem today. Don't wait until the day before the exam. Okay. I'm going to ask you. Okay. Hi. Give me the message. Don't play with the telephone, okay? This is a class time. Only unless you really expect some urgent message. Okay, otherwise, okay, tell me what is the idea to prove? I, I will ask you that, okay? Is it a convergent diamond? Make a guess. And then why? Based on what? Now who can give me the answer? It's convergent or that? Uh, why? Um, give me a rough idea why it's convergent. Uh, so I did the limit convergence test uh, and per piece of n, I just removed plus one and minus one, and did n over n cubed, <coughs> n over n cubed, and then it was one over n squared for piece of n. Okay. Yeah, one of n. I should not say one of n squared, then I know you got the idea. Okay, this series is similar to the series of p series with p equals two. Then the question is whether you want to use the limit, the compression test, or the compression test. And for this particular problem, you can use compression. The reason is I put n minus one on the top. Okay, so this is n and q plus one. First of all, it's always non-negative. Okay, and this this is important. You cannot use a compression test for series with change signs. Okay, and this 
right? Because they are minus one. So it's easy to get rid of a negative one. And then you enlarge, the uh, uh, decrease the denominator and enlarge the fraction. So that is one of n square. That's your PA. Okay, use the compression test, it's easy here. And uh, that's the easiest method, okay? Then you, you have to say that this is a convergent and y by the p series test, okay? Okay, and you have to point out p is greater than one. Okay, then you conclude that this is a convergent, okay, by the compression test. Now, you can use a limited compression test. If you don't want to do some estimate, sometimes you make mistakes because when you estimate, uh, you try to get an upper bound, you have to make an upper bound, okay? But if it's not in court, it does not hold, then your argument is wrong, okay? So it's uh, it's not easy to get upper bound for some, in some cases. For example, I change n to the n plus one, n minus one to the n plus one, then it's difficult, okay? All right, so the second method is you still use a BN, but I got BN not using this in code. I got the BN because I drop the constant terms, which is going to be one of n squared. That is the BN. Okay. Actually, when I make a conjecture, this uh, series convergent best act. I just get rid of all the unwanted terms. Then I simplify it to one of n squared. Then it's easy to check if you just drop those terms and the limit must be equal to one. The one is a positive uh, uh, finite number. So these two series have the same convergence, okay? And, uh, and uh, since this is a still convergent, okay, by the P-series test, P-series test, then, uh, then you imply this series converted by limited compression test, okay? By limited compression test. So there are two different ways to solve this problem. Now, using other methods, uh, you can, but I think the rate, you see, think about what kind of other tests you can use. So n converging to zero. So you cannot use that to prove it's divergent because the square is convergent. Okay? You cannot use that, but you cannot say because n converging to zero, that's why the series convergent. We know we don't have such a theorem there. Okay. Can you use a ratio test? Inconclusive. Can you use a rotor test? It's pretty hard to find the nth row and find the limit. So ratio test, the limit is going to be one. One is not. It's useless. You cannot use a ratio test. So don't use a ratio test to, to uh, uh, n term of a polynomial of another polynomial. Because that only gives you the constant one, the limit. Okay? We call it rational function. Yeah, the n term test, uh, the, uh, the load, uh, yeah, the ratio test will gives you, uh, yeah, gives you one. So the limit, of n approaches infinity, n plus one over n is going to be one. Okay, so so it's going to be one, and uh, inconclusive by the ratio test. You are not going to use the ratio test. Okay, if you jump to conclusion, hey, because by the ratio test, this convergent. That's ridiculous. We ratio test never guarantees this is convergent because the limit is one. Only the limit is gonna be less than one to ratio. It is it is convergent by the ratio test. So then you cannot get any points for this. If you use a ratio test to, to conclude this is a convergent, indeed as a series convergent, the answer is correct. But the solutions are all the argument. Okay, you can you cannot get credits. Okay, just like a lawyer, we go to store, you know, go to the court, you say he, he's guilty, but use all the wrong evidence to prove it. You, you cannot, right? You cannot get any points out of that. Of course, this guy eventually proved to be guilty, but 
It's not because of you. Okay. <laughs> because of another lawyer who died. <laughs> right. So, so this is the point. Okay. Uh, now, if I change the problem a little bit, then then you probably cannot use a, a, a comparison test because if I change the n plus one and q plus, that's just small change. It looks similar, but you're not able to use a ratio test, a, a comparison test, because it's not that easy to do that. Right? You cannot just drop, you know, and yeah, you cannot drop one. You can drop, uh, it's, it's challenge, okay? So what you do is, uh, and this is still non-negative, right? N plus one. But you cannot drop the one on the numerator. Okay, but you can drop the one in the denominator. This is true because you make the denominator smaller than the whole fraction line. Then what? You cannot get rid of it, right? There are two options to get rid of it. You can, you can use the property, either use, consider so two series. N over n q plus one over n, okay, which is going to be one over n square and plus one over n, uh, one over n cube. So both series are convergent, then the sum of these two, okay, would be convergent. Okay, that's the, yeah, this is a being complicated, but, uh, but you can, yeah, you can show that this is convergent, okay. This is a convergent, not because of a p-series, because the sum of two p-series, okay, is convergent, okay. Oh, why it's gone, okay. Since this two series is convergent. Therefore, yeah, they're convergent by the p-series, okay. Therefore, the sum will be convergent. Okay, we have a statement like that. Uh, one of n square, yeah. So I, 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 I said few, yeah, then the sum of those two terms, you get a new series, yeah. And then, yeah, there is a theorem, you know, if you have one series, is convergent, another series is convergent, the sum of the corresponding ter n's term added together, right? You get in another series. That series will be also convergent. Okay. Then you can say that. Okay. Then, uh, then this is a convergent by the comparison test. It's a little bit complicated to prove a one over n square plus one over n cube why it's convergent. Because each of them, each each series convergent. Now, is there another way I can? I don't want to have two terms. I just want only one term. It's possible. The reason is n plus one is less than or equal to n plus n. Everybody agrees that, right? This is, this is requires uh, some math back skill. Okay, not everybody can see that. Okay, if I tell you, yes, that's obvious, but do you think that way? <laughs> right? So that will be two n. And it's obvious because n is greater than one. That's the reason it's true. Okay. So so n equals n plus one, n cubed plus one is less than or equal to two n. That's fine. Then n cubed, that's okay. So just two over n square, which is b n. Then it's just only one single uh series. Okay. So that's why um uh, you can, uh, yeah, then uh, then, uh, be, then uh, this is a convergent by the P-series, okay? Because the constant is okay, it doesn't matter, right? If I can't. So this is a convergent by the P-series test, okay? Then you implies the series A and is convergent. by the compression test. But 
for this problem, maybe you should limit the compression test. Okay, limit the compression test uh, uh, requires uh, less uh, uh, knowledge in mathematics, just find the limit. Okay, first of all, you get rid of all unwanted terms. Yeah, you get rid of all the unwanted terms, n plus one, n cube plus one, and n over n cube, which is one over n square, which is Vn. Okay, but this time, uh, the limit is still one. Yeah, then you use a limit compression test, you can show that, okay? So that is just probably the limit compression is the best way because you don't need that. You just drop unwanted terms, you get simplified series, and that simplified series is G-series that's convergent, then the original is convergent, okay? You still have this, okay? And uh, that for, <coughs> You, you have this as a convergent, okay? So then you conclude that this is a convergent. So there are many ways by the limit compression test, okay? So for the same problem, now this problem, if I modify a little bit, uh, you need to find the best way to do that. Okay, the next one. I, I'm going to modify this problem a little bit. N minus one here, N minus one, N cube. If I put this problem on the test, what is the best way to problem? I give you half a minute, think I'm up. You have to give you some idea. All right. <coughs> Yeah, you have to quickly go through all the methods. You have to like, close your eye. Like, this is five seven. Right, right. Those are the rules, right? We learn and then we apply some of them to prove. I think it's converging. So, to me, without the negative signs, already converging, right? Then put it not the negative signs, more like. Thing. Think about the harmonic series. Harmonic series even is divergent. But if you put a negative one to the power of the let's make it converging. Alternate really, yeah, make, very, uh, make some uh, series converge. So, right, so this is alternate series. And the majority of students will try to use the alternate series test too. It's convergent. I just say majority because you can see that negative one to the n power. Oh, that's not the same. But that's not the best way. Honestly, that's not the best way to do. That takes more time. Okay, you have to prove that uh, 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 the Bn is decreasing. Decreasing part it takes more time. Okay, we can try. Okay, so this is alternating series. It's very natural to use the alternating series test to prove its convergent. So this is my Bn. Okay, Bn equals n minus one n cube plus. I think 
this is not all it's always convert you know it's zero in n equals one so i think it's go up somewhere down like that okay it's not always a uh, uh, decreasing because that's what because the first term is already zero right so somewhere for n greater than some number is decreasing c enough okay and uh, it's also easy to see that bn is going to be zero okay because the uh, numerate is n denominator n cubed so the limit so my only concern is whether this is decreasing so so here's the function but that's decreasing for larger x is enough okay so you have to prove it's the derivative is negative for sufficient large x so the derivative is going to be x cubed plus one square and the one x cubed plus one minus x minus one times three x squared okay this is a this is a, a derivative of x cubed plus one so let's simplify it x cubed plus one minus three x cubed minus minus plus three x squared you see it's not uh, easy to to look at okay uh, so many terms there okay so you get one plus three x squared minus two x cubed i want to make sure this is going to be negative okay so that means there's a third term in the numerator is getting large i think it's going to be negative but how do you say that? Okay, how do you say that, right? So it's better to take x cubed out. Okay, maybe even put a negative sign out. So I get one, two, minus three over x, minus one over x cubed. Something like that. So as long as this part is positive, then I'm fine. But I think this term clearly is positive for sufficient large x, right? So the, the result will be, yeah, the result. This will be positive. Now, when it's positive, uh, when, uh, the, when uh, 3 over x plus 1 over x cubed less than 2, right? So we just assume x is greater than x greater than 3 how about like that when x greater than 3 is this less than 3 over 3 plus 3 cubed less than equal to 3. 1 plus 1 2 okay yeah okay x is less than greater than equals 3 is enough so that makes sure it's going to be negative for x greater than equals 3 okay so that means bn decreasing for n greater than equals 3 uh, that's it. That's enough. So therefore, by the by the uh, alternate series test, this series is convergent by the alternate series test. Okay. This is a natural idea, alternate series test nature, but it's not easy to do the problem. You have to prove the into the derivative is negative for this particular mm -hmm. function. The derivative is negative, but but for large x, you have to figure it out. You have to tell me for what x, right? And uh, clearly, the, uh, the numerator will be negative when x sufficient large, because the leading term is negative three. Okay. Now, let's go back to this problem again. Well, the easiest way to prove that is to look at the absolute value of all the terms, okay? So you change it to consider this, okay? Which is going to be, okay? And this is convergent by the compression test. I, you, know, you can go back to that. It is convergent by the comparison test or the limited comparison test. We did it before, right? Okay. So this is convergent. So the original series is absolutely convergent. Of course, it's convergent. We have to deal with that, right? So this implies this 
and even get more than we need, okay, is now if you are not asked to check whether it's absolutely convergent, so you don't need to say that. Otherwise, you should say absolutely convergent. Of course, it's convergent. Uh, if you are not asked to to prove it's absolutely convergent, then you just say convergent. By by the theorem, I have no, I don't have a name that by the theorem. <laughs> by the theorem in the book, <laughs> that was the theorem in the ratio test on the road test. The first thing I'm saying, if the sigma mass of a pseudo n is convergent, then then the the, the series is convergent. Okay, then we talk about uh, ratio test, then road test. Okay. So for this particular problem. Use this method is the best. It should get more than me, and it's much easier. You get rid of negative. You see, a, a little compression test is simple. Eliminate compression is also simple. Then the derivatives. You cannot use any other method. There are no ratio test, no road test. Okay. However, if I change it to the problem, uh change to the problem like n, uh, like a three to the power n instead of n cube, okay? And uh, yeah, I even put the constant here, okay? Then this is the n, n plus one or n minus one, okay? What is the best way to do? Now you can still use a consider alternate thing series. Then use the alternate thing series test to prove it's convergent. It's convergent, okay? And the reason it's three to the power n is pretty grows pretty fast. Okay. No matter it's negative or positive, you're getting any uh, small, small number decreasing very fast. So the contribution, negative or positive, is really can be ignored. So eventually it has a limit. That's okay. So, how do you give a simple argument? How do you get a simple argument? I think if, uh, if you can prove this absolute uh, convergence, that's fine, right? So you really don't, if you don't want the alternative series test, just ignore the negative signs. Okay? Just take out the super value. If it's convergent, use the sum. Right here. Then, uh, then, uh, then it's a super value. Okay. So we are going to discuss lots of problems today. Slowly, but maybe not there. Then they have another class. So when you get home, when you prepare, Doing the homework, don't look at the notes first. Don't just read it. Just cover the problem, cover the solution. Just think about how many methods you can quote to do this type of problem. Okay? Then you do need to spend some time, spend a few minutes, not just like a 30 seconds you can give up. Okay? Some problems you need to spend 10 minutes, even 15 minutes. But once you figure it out by yourself, you will memorize it because when you think, when you're trying to figure out the method, you, you don't just sit there, right? You, you actually use the uh, activity all your brain cells <laughs> work on this problem. So you will, they are the cells will memorize what you can discover. What you can, okay? So when, you, when the similar problems on the test, you say, oh, I remember that. If you just get help from the tutor or from me, and from, a, from the notes, for the same particular problem, you might put it on exactly the same problem on the test, you are not you are not getting able to do it. You forget. You have no idea. Okay. So it's it's, a, it's basically it's useless if you just read it. Mathematics you cannot just read it. You have to give the hints and do the problem.
another problem is it don't always think oh, I'm not good at maths. Okay, I give up. I look at the book. But that's also right. <laughs> that's the reason why there are very few female mathematicians because they are always think, okay, look at the one. There are not so many there. I'm not good. How can I make it? <laughs> so they change. Because they're equally good. Okay. And uh, and just because the mind is sitting, they make a choice. They think, oh, they're not many. They're right. At least the biologically, it's not proof. Women cannot do better than men in mathematics or even in cooking. I know that I went to some of the restaurants that find the cook is male. That was a surprise because at home, always mother cook food. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it depends on how much time you devote to improve. All right, uh, okay, let's do this problem. I, we, because we did the last problem, we, I think it's alternative series, but I always ask yourself, should I use alternative series then prove it? Because you have to prove it's decreasing, right? And then you have to find the derivative. And it's not easy, okay? Sometimes on purpose, we don't want to use alternative series test to prove it's converging. So we make the problem like that. So make it even more difficult for you to prove BN decreasing. <laughs> All right. So if you if you if you still do that, then and you have to spend more time than as a student, probably you're not making it. So we can see the, the absolute value of that term, which which is going to be yeah, just n minus one three to the n plus one. So I want to make sure this is converging. But whenever I see, uh, I can use uh, several ways to prove. Okay, I can use several methods. So this is my, you know, I can call it the BN, doesn't matter, okay? Yeah. So you can use a composite test. So this is going to be N minus one, three to the N plus, right? It's less than equal to N, three to the N. The trouble is, Yeah, so to the end is fine, but that's n here, okay? So that's the difficult part, right? You cannot use a, get a single uh, 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 geometric series, okay? But I know n is n groups more than uh, uh, exponential function. So I'm pretty sure n is less than three to the pi, okay? Doesn't matter, it's true, okay? Uh, it's uh, uh, and even for the two n here, okay? Because I don't want to have three n, otherwise I can sit out. <laughs> okay, n equal. You can look at it, right? This is a green line. So after that, the term on the right hand side grows for much fast. Otherwise, we, why we call it exponential growth, right? Exponential growth is uh, grows much faster than polynomial growth. So this is a simple inequality. If you know. If you can quote to this simple in code, then this is going to be two to the n or three to the n. And the, why I have to use a two to the n instead of three? Because I really want to make this one like that, right? And this is geometric series, okay? And then, and uh, this is a, it's convergent. I think it's obvious by the geometric series because i equals two over three less than equal one, okay? Yeah, geometric series. So this implies this is a convergent uh, by uh, by the comparison test. Okay, and this implies this is a convergent. Okay, by the theorem in the book, I think in section. By the theorem in the section section one point six. Right. Uh, eleven point six, not one point six. Yeah, by the six. That's the first theorem. All right. So because the absolute value of each term, get a new uh new new series, and that series convergence. 
Okay, but you can also show that the CSBN converging using the ratio test. Okay, using the ratio test. So let's go back to this. It's n minus one, three to the n plus one, right? And this is going to be greater than equal to zero, right? And uh, the ratio test. Let's look at the ratio to n plus one over v n. Okay. Okay. So that is going to be three to the n plus one n n minus one to the three to the plus. Okay. Uh, I only have to say that n should be greater than two, otherwise there was a problem BN, you know. We, we ignore the first time. It's okay. okay. So after you simplify it, you get three to the n plus one, three to the n plus one. And here's n, n mark. Okay. But clearly this approach is one, don't worry about that. This approach is one third. Why it's one third? Because you can divide three to the three, uh, sorry to the n, and this will be three plus one over three to the n. This approaches one third because each term approaches here. Okay, so eventually this approaches one third. Okay, one third is less than one. Okay, so that that implies this is a convergent to it's to use from two, okay, is convergent by the ratio test, okay. We cannot use the low test because it's harder to get rid of the positive one, you know. Yeah, low test is not work, does not work very well here. All right, so the same, uh, you see, every problem I provide, you know, you can use them one or more than one, to prove its convergence, okay? So as long as it's convergent, then then uh, then uh, the alternative series is convergent, okay? It's a pursuit convergent. Okay, speaking of alternative series, you see all the methods I provided here, we do not use the alternative series test. Okay, is it convergent or divergent? Yeah, you have to think about that. Right. Uh, if you try to use the alternate series test, you look at the BA, and you find out the BA does not approach you. Okay. 
So this is the VN. Okay, you look at the VN. Yeah, so let's use the natural idea first, right? So it's, <laughs> but this positive part greater than equal zero, no problem. Does it approach, uh, uh, does it, yeah, but the problem is when n approaches infinity, Vn is going to be 1. Okay, it's not going to be 0. It has a limit. So that, that implies this one, the limit does not exist. It's not, uh, so, uh, so we have, uh, uh, so does not exist. That implies the series is divergent. By nth term test for divergence. Okay. I think this is the only way you can do it. So uh, now let's look at the next problem. n to the two power n, n plus one to the three n, okay? So uh, think about this problem and I will ask you how to do it. Well, it's a two mm -hmm. to the uh, power n, okay? To uh, n to the two n. Is there any good method you can use? I think this is a convergent. The problem is, how do you prove it? And how many methods you can think about? Maybe someday I'll give you a test day. If you want to get extra credits, you have to give me extra method for the same problem. <laughs> That'd be a good idea, you know? Right? Prove the convergence using two different methods and earn extra credits. All right, the first method. I probably want to use a comparison test, but the question is how can I use the comparison test? This is going to be what? 
is going to be n square to the power n, right? n plus one cubed to the power n. So this is going to be n square n plus one cubed square n to the power n. So this number is getting smaller and smaller. You agree, right? It's going to zero. So I want to make sure, I'm trying to compare with the geometric series. Right? Okay. That term is getting smaller and smaller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to this. It's one over n, right? Right? So as long as I can make it smaller than one, it's okay. So this will be smaller than two when n greater than two, right? Done. So that implies n less than equal to one half to the power n when greater than equal to whoa. <laughs> See, I have to say that it's not easy to, okay? Unless you are very good in your mathematics to find a nice upper bound. Composite test, yeah. It's not the best way sometimes. Sometimes it's very easy, but you do have to find the apple bond bias, okay? And then you see that, right? If I rewrite the expression to something to it, it's R, then I say that, oh, this is going to be geometry series. That can be changed, but let's keep changing. It's okay, let's get small and small. I just want to make sure that term is smaller than some number, which is smaller than one. And then n squared over n plus one cube, it should be less than or equal to one half. For sufficient larger n, n greater than two. All right, so this implies uh, this is geometric series, right? I don't need to say implies the geometric series n start from two to infinity. This is a convergent, it's obvious, you know. Then this implies the series. Is converted okay, by the compression test. That's not as a easy way to do. Okay, so we try. If you see some number to the nth power, then you should use a load n and uh, load test. Okay, so you try to use a load test. Okay, if you use a load test. It's going to be n to the 2n, n plus 1 to the 3n. So you, you end up with n square n plus 1 cube. And that clearly this approach is 0. Okay, I don't need to waste too, too, much, too much time to show you, right? This approach is 0. As n approaches infinity, and 0 is less than 1. Okay, so that, that we can say. By the load test, this series is convergent. Okay, all the upper through very convergent because it's positive, it's the same. Okay. And this, of course, it's convergent. In this case, it's the same. Okay. So for this problem, we have two methods, right? But the compression test, it's not easy to see, uh, to use, but it works. Okay, do this problem. Okay, let's do it.
How many methods you have figured out to use? Yeah? Is it convergent or divergent? No? I don't know. You don't know? I think it's convergent. The reason is the denominator is the exponential function. Exponential function grows so fast here. Yeah, Okay, the numerator is, is, is a polynomial. So it must be convergent. And this is an alternating series. So the natural idea is to use alternating series. That always works most of the time. Okay, to prove it's convergent. So that's one method. Second method is maybe it's absolutely convergent. Get rid of the negative sign. Then you can use all the other methods, right? All the other methods, even integral test, you know, ratio, uh, integral test, ratio test, row test, comparison test, right? But those tests only work for terms was positive, the new series was positive, okay? Only the alternatives, you know, uh, ratio test, yeah. Ratio test, road test, actually, yeah, works for the, you know, we have to take absolute value. So essentially, you converted the series to, to a series with absolute value by it. Then you apply the ratio a road test. So let's see. First of all, uh, alternating series test, okay? And this is a positive, and I'm pretty sure the limit is going to be zero. Okay, how do you prove that? Look at this rule, okay? Because a function uh, is going to, yeah, this is the f of x is going to be x squared two to the x. And the limit, as x approaches infinity, it's going to be zero, okay? So the limit, okay? This is an infinite over infinite type. That's going to be two x, two to the x nature of, nature of two. But that's not enough. Then you continue to show that's two and two to the x, the derivative of this, and that's going to be zero. Okay. So the limit is zero. That's x approaches infinity. But we care about the derivative. So the derivative should be negative for sufficient large x. So square. So it's two x. So derivative of this is two x, right? Minus x squared, two x natural natural log of two. Okay, quotient rule. So you take two x out and cancel when you denominate. You get two x minus natural log of two and x squared. All right? Two to the x cancelled out. Then you take x out. I get two minus x natural log of two. So when this is going to be negative, this is negative. If uh, if x is greater than two over natural log of two. Now what is that number? I don't know. But you can get some estimate. Okay, right? you can get some estimate. Natural log of two is positive. I said that it's positive, but this is always uh it's positive because two is between one and the, and the e is 2.76 something so it's less than one but it's harder to estimate maybe greater than one half but that's not enough yeah anyway if you use a uh, if yeah, I cannot use a calculate, and we have to figure out uh, a, a number which is greater than two over. If you don't want it, it's fine. Just keep it like that. Okay, this implies f x is decreasing on the interval from two to the nature of two 
to infinity, right? This implies Vn of f of n decreasing for n greater than or equal to 2 over nature number. That's fine, right? <laughs> 2 over nature number to be some number, maybe 10.3, maybe 2 over 4, you know, 2, 2, 2.4, you know, whatever. Because this is okay. So some number, positive number. That's enough. Okay, decreasing to zero. Then that implies this is a convergent, okay, convergent by the alternating series test. Okay. But as you see, the alternating series test is not. Probably not the best way to do. It works. Okay, just like when you're trying to solve quadratic function, quadratic equation, you can use always use a quadratic formula to find the roots, right? That's some that's a simple way that like factor the quadratic function, then you can quickly get to the roots. Then you don't need to waste time. So let's go back to this problem. Okay. Alternating series, okay? You can always uh, use a ratio test, a rotor test to check the convergence, uh, but through the convergence, okay? So this is the uh, n, and let's, because two to the n, right? So you can look at, because maybe it's a uh, through convergence, okay? So this is going to be n plus one squared, two to the n plus one, n squared over 2 to the n. After you simplify it, okay, just simplify, okay? So when is that 2 to the n plus 1 in the denominator and the 2 to the n, okay? Uh, yeah, this looks like a 2n, so it's 2 to the n. Okay, so you can, then you simplify to maybe like that. Okay, so it's easy to, to check this limit as n goes to infinity. <coughs> and what does that tell you? This is less than one. Okay, so that implies this series is absolutely convergent. Right. Now, in mathematics, we do want to know uh, uh, why this is convergent because they help because by the ratio test, but can you prove the ratio test, right? Yeah. If you're a math major, you should know. That's the minimum requirement. I don't want to scare you away from math. Major. I hope more students get a math. Major. Okay. All right, so this is a convergent by the ratio test. But you can also use a load test. Okay? And you can also look at load test. Okay? So this is going to be Okay? So load test square and 2, right? And that is going to be actually if you switch it. Okay. So again, this is going to be the limit is going to be uh uh one half, which is also less than one. Okay, we're using the fact. I did I did that in class. This is gonna be one. Okay. For the ratio the road testing, very often you're gonna get this problem. Okay. Okay. So you can say that. Is convergent by the load test. Okay, 
So now three methods. Now why? What's the what's the what's the theory, uh, idea behind that? Why this is a uh, uh, true? Okay. Because we ratio test and low test actually we compare with the geometric series. Think about that. If uh, by the ratio test, right? Uh, yeah, the idea why the ratio test is correct. So look at this, right? This is supposed to be limit less than one. So this is supposed to be less than one, less than one for for n greater than capital N. Okay. If you can prove that, then guarantee the series convergent. Okay. If the limit is uh, l l less than one, then it's always true. Okay, for sufficient large n. Then when you do that, you will get like this. Okay, how many terms here? You have uh, you have uh, n minus capital N plus one terms. Okay, so but each of them is less than or equal to r. So it's r to the n minus capital, right? Yeah. Okay. And then you will see they all cancelled out. So the only you you will only get capital N is fixed. That's why you have this so-called geometric series and you can, you can express it in that form. Okay, that is constant is fixed. This is a true for N capital greater than, okay? Or you can, um, you can, uh, uh, you can plus like this. Yeah, okay? So it's interesting, right? And that is a geometric series, okay? And I is this, right? So if uh, if n capital is a uh, uh, n is a start from uh, from capital n, right, to to infinity, and that is a n, it's less than and this. Clearly, it's finite because why this? I'm just trying to explain to you why this is converted. So, the ratio test and rotor test, I did not give the proof in the last class, but this is a proof, idea of a proof. Um, if you have this for n greater than equal n, then you, you, can, you can compare the series with the geometric series. Okay, and the geometry is is a is a convergent because i is less than one. Okay. That is the reason. You can also use the integral test to prove this convergent. Just uh, just a little bit complicated, okay? So the third method is uh, just look at this, right? Look at this series, n square over two to the n, right? Just look at that. How do you prove this is a convergent, right? Yeah, this is a convergent. Of course, then the alternate series episode convergent. <laughs> this is a convergent because uh, n equals n square over two n, which is equal to f of n. And uh, and uh, this is a decreasing, right? We know that, right? We know this is a uh, f of x, x square of two to the x, positive decreasing. Okay. So only problem is, can you evaluate x square of two to the x dx? Can we do that? It's good exercise. Okay, you can, honestly. Okay, you can just look at the entire derivative. Okay, which is going to be x square two to the negative x dx. Okay, you want to get rid of x square, one by one. 
right? How to get rid of x squared? That's a dv. That's a u. Switch the order, right? So my v is going to be uh, two to the negative x. When I differentiate, what I got? Okay, that's not enough, right? E to the negative, right? It's going to be negative natural log of two, I think. Yeah, when you differentiate, uh, <laughs> Uh, that's right. So this is uh, going to be, yeah, if we differentiate, this is a, this gives you the, the, okay. You can also think about like that. V is going to be, uh, yeah, the integral, yeah, dV is going to be one half to the X, dX, right? So V should be equal to one half to the X divided by natural log one half. Okay, that's why the negative sign, okay? All right, so this is going to be, okay, x squared times one half of x, natural log of one half, minus natural log of one half, uh, I'm going to get uh, one half to the x, then you differentiate dx, okay? So, just one more step. One more step. It's two natural log one half. Okay. And uh, this is an integral of x. Right? So again, it's x. Minus. Okay, so again, the uh, let's let's figure it out. It's two natural log of one half square and x. And then minus plus, how many terms do I have here? It's two natural log of one half, the cube, and the one half x. Okay, so this is an entire derivative. And you let, if, if you let x to be, uh, uh, if you let x go to infinity, this goes to zero. Okay, this goes to zero. So, so clearly the limit as, as b approaches infinity, one uh, one of b and uh, x square one half of, of x to the x. This is supposed to be zero. Uh, this this is the final the convergent. Okay, it's convergent. It's convergent to l, which is less than the uh, less than infinity. Okay, so that's why. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit complicated, but you can find it. Usually, I will put the x there instead of x squared, so you don't have so many terms. Right now, you have to have three terms. So you can show that uh, you find the antiderivative. You take the difference at two end points for one and b. Then you let the b go to infinity. Then the other term will disappear only when x equals one. Okay, so I can write down the exact value for, for the air, but it's a finite. So that's all for today's class. Uh, we will continue. Now, next class, if you show up here, you should be able to do most of the problems. Instead, I have to ask you, I have no idea, not great, because this is a, a it's time to go over the material.